You're going to have to edit, edit out that last part. No. <laughs> so, yeah. So I bought chickens last weekend and that's a, it's a pretty, um, pretty interesting journey. Like eggs are expensive. So we, 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 we've always wanted chickens. Yeah. We just kept telling ourselves. Dude, I want some, we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get them. We'll get them eventually when we're ready. We'll get them. And I realized, uh, sometime the week before last weekend, I was like, if we don't do it, we're never going to do it. Yeah. So we, we, we pulled the trigger and I got to tell you, it's kind of nice hearing little chicks tweeting all the time in the house. It's, it's, it's really cool. We've got a, we, they, they're living in our house right now because they have to, like they're too small to live outside right now. So we're, we're, we're brooding them. So you got a house full of chicks is what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> Whole house full of chicks. I admire you, man. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Hey, so me, me they're out. And, oh shit. I did it again. <laughs> Me and my boys are outnumbered. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting. We're, we're going to do goats. Awesome. We're going to do, uh, Hell yeah. we're going to kind of do a whole farm. Fun fact. Grow I, our own food. Uh, one of the most easy plants to grow in Florida is like banana trees. I planted two of them. And they died like three months later. So apparently I suck at this. <laughs> so, you know, I'm all about self-sufficiency and having chickens and having some eggs, man, doing a garden, having, having bananas, even though. If I can get some more pups, would you like them? What's a pup? Oh, you mean pups for the banana? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, for sure. Cause I want to go at it again. Cause there was, uh, there were three banana trees down the road from my house. That uh, they're they're seemingly sitting on. I would, I'm assuming that it's unowned land or un undeveloped land. Okay, but it's a clearing. Someone mows it. Right, but they're right in the middle. Yeah. Uh, these banana trees they fell over after uh, uh, during our, our, uh, the last hurricane we had. Yeah. Uh, Ian, <laughs> there you go, Ian. Uh, yeah, so. We were like, shit, I guess they're dead. Well, okay. the pups planted and they're, yeah, they're running it. Yeah. I was like, cool. Yeah. If you, you get, have to have really wet land though. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I have a sprinkler and I would turn it on every day. I would make sure that they're you're full, very high on full, your property. Yeah. Like yeah. Your property stays relatively dry, just it like it does. Mine. Very dry, very hot. But I so mean, it's almost got to be bananas. A constant. Bananas, man, they should they they should thrive in this area. But I think something broke one of my trees because I came home, it was snapped in half. It was about three and a half, four feet high, and that it was is snapped. Really good. That is good. That's real good. That is really good. Uh, so it should be good. Do you think it's animals? I think it was. Yeah, I had a dog coming. <laughs> we had this whole conversation picked out. We're, <laughs> we're doing this now. Yeah. let's keep it. I had a. Uh, I had a dog come into my yard. Mm -hmm. I, I saw him on my cameras mm -hmm. and I was like, what the fuck? Maybe, maybe this is what happened to my banana tree because they were thriving, man. And I had one just, I came home, it was snapped in half, snapped in half, still alive, just snapped. And, uh, I think maybe Gus got it. No, just running around. No, nope. Okay. He would never mess with them. He, Dude, he's scared. He's a big baby. He's he, a big baby. He walks up to it. He sniffs it, and he's like, "Yeah, nope. not my, not my bag." <laughs> I'm not even peeing on this thing. <laughs> nope, nope. Um, no, yeah, no. We saw another dog in the yard. Whenever we wasn't home, we saw it on the camera, and I'm like, "What?" Like he jumped your fence? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think that is all the more reason to buy a 22. <clears throat> Fuck you. That's the best ain't reason. killing no dog, man. Oh, your wife would kill you. My wife would kill me, you. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're right. Never what? mind. What? I just, I, I look at strays and, and things like that. I don't look at them as, as pets or animals. Like, they're a nuisance. What? Legit, dude. Come on. No, All right, let's, let's be real about man. something. Come on. So is, is, your, is your wife going to, like, are, are you going to get mad or your wife going to get mad about uh, raccoons? 
My wife? Uh, yeah. Because if you start growing food, they're going to fuck up your food. Yeah, I know. Are you going to get mad about possums? Listen, I- I'm going to explain a little bit of my life here. My <laughs> wife is like a... Uh, a tree hugging hippie, right? I love her to death. She's probably the, She's the most, most conservative tree hugging hippie ever. And she is. Yes. She's like a conservative tree hugging hippie Latina. She breaks every stereotype in the book. If there is a book, I, I don't know if they make a book about her. Okay. Mm-mm. Cause she breaks every stereotype there is. She's so sweet. And she's probably the most thoughtful person I've ever met in my life, but she does. She doesn't have the line like, okay, we have stray cats, right? Yeah. My wife being my wife, she's like, we got to feed the stray cats. And I'm like, all right, you know, it is what it is. It's not hurting me. I don't care. It is what it is. Um, she saved a kitten and she <laughs> raised it out here. And then the boys came around and, you know, they made yeah. kittens and, and yeah. just it just snowballed. But, but don't you think the most humane thing is to take them to the humane society and see if they can get a home? Well, rather than leaving them, leaving them stray and feeding them here. A lot of the times the humane society, they don't want to take them in. They say they don't have room. We have a, we have a small, and I have a very good relationship, a very close relationship with the owner and, and, uh, administrator Mm -hmm. of the humane society and whatnot. She just helped us out a lot, uh, recently. And, uh, they just, man, they're, they're, they're stretched. You know, they, they take on a lot they don't, I'm sure. They don't have a lot of room, a lot of time. So we, we just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, we have these cats and they come around, we feed them. Well, I seen a family of raccoons because here's the thing. You start to feed the cats, raccoons come around. Legit. The raccoons come around. Next thing you know, you got some fucking bears. That shit happens. This Florida. People are like, ah, we don't have bears. There's no bears, bitch. There's fucking bears. Now, before you go any further, I'm going to tell you mine. Because I'm going to confirm everything you just said. Yeah. We own cats. Yeah. We have cats outside of our house. They are our pets, but they are outside cats Mm -hmm. because I have enough land that varmints become a a nuisance. Yeah. I.e. rats, mice, things like that will burrow their way into my home. Yeah. And they will eat my food. And then I have to throw all my food away because it's either infected or yeah, like you can't have that stuff. So I have cats. We call them barn cats. Because that's what they're there for. They're there to take care of rodents. That being said, in having those cats and having outside cats, we have an abundance of raccoons that love to show up and possums. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I have killed a lot of them. Because if I don't, they will continue to come back and make it their home. Yeah. I cannot have those things on my property for the food that I plan to grow, the chickens that I plan to have. Ra- raccoons will kill a chicken. Oh, Legit. Dude, I have raccoons kill a kitten mm-hmm. outside. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, I had this conversation with my wife about. Uh, They're totally cute, dude. I love trash pandas. Yeah. I think, <laughs> trash I think pandas they're the cutest rock. thing in the world. Until they string up your kitten and <clears throat> rip its guts out because that's what happened in my front yard. Yeah. And my wife didn't want to believe it. She was like, oh, my God, what happened? And I showed her the camera of a family of raccoons. And I'm like, listen, man, these things, they, they look how they're they They're scavengers. Look, but they will fuck some shit up. They're scavengers. Yeah. And they're dangerous, And man. they wholly they're live. They're dangerous. Yes. Hell, I just saw, I saw a video where a raccoon attacked a small child. Legit. And the mother had to come and grab that fucker and mm-hmm. toss it across the yard. Oh, yeah. They're wild animals. So... After, during all the, during the, the raccoons, uh, we had, um, possums start showing up. All right. So I've destroyed a handful of possums too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I can't have them on my property because they breed disease. Fucking Florida. Right. Yeah. And in that process over this last year of living here. Yeah. On that property. Mm-hmm. I had a black bear on my property. Yeah. Destroy my trash. Yep. Move my trash from my trash can into the woods next to me. Yeah. I don't know if it's still living there. Right. I'm assuming it migrated because we saw in more video of a similar looking black bear in Avon Park, Avon Park Lakes. Yeah. Far away from my home. I probably gave a little bit too much away there, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really care. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's the whole me in in a previous episode. Go ahead, dox me. I dare you. It's not what you want to do. Right. But that being said, these these animals are not meant to live on my property. Yeah. They're not no. meant to live on your property. Right. And I think at some point, we have to come to grips with that. Yeah. No, I And there's totally only one agree. way to take care of it. I was telling my wife about these raccoons, and I caught them on video. And there was a whole family. Sure. She had a big old fat raccoon, his, his wife and kids, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is the reality of it. And I'm like, look. This is when you start to get bears. And she's like, we don't got bears. Oh. We don't have bears. So the, the irony is that probably two weeks go by and I'm driving to work and it's like five in the morning and I'm driving around the lake. Yeah. I come around the corner and a fucking bear is crossing the highway. And I'm like, oh, I had to slow down. And I called her. At five in the morning, I go, tell me again the story of how we don't have bears because there's a bear just ran out in front of me over by your brother's house. Yeah. Your brother is about 30 feet from this bear, Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure it went down his road. So when you start inviting the uh, creatures of the world into your front yard, it escalates. I love the cats. I love the dogs. You know, I I call my wife a a tree hugging hippie. (laughs) I'm similar, man. I'm a very. She loves animals. And I get that. Yeah. I'm a very, I'm a very Buddhist uh, type of life over everything uh, type of person. Like I don't, it's just my nature, man. My nature is not to kill everything first. It's to let it leave first. And when it becomes threatening or I know it can be a nuisance to our life. Then it's different. My man steps in and I'm okay. like, look, I, the first I've time gotta, you allow it. Yeah. Well, is, is, is where you should have stopped it. Yeah. When, 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 <clears throat> when we had the raccoon show up, I was like, ah, not that big a deal. It's eating the cat food. So now it's caught. Now it's, now it's another mouth. That's exactly that what I'm happened. feeding. Yeah. Right. That's it's exactly eating, what happened to me. It's yeah. eating my cat food. And Same I was like, story. ah, it's not that big a deal. It'll go away. Right. Yeah. I let it go. Yeah. It was a hard lesson. Didn't go away, did it? No, it didn't. No. It brought a coyote onto my property. Yep. Which then killed two of my cats. Right. Yep. Guaranteed. Yeah. That coyote has yet to be back. Right. Because it will meet its end too. <laughs> However, raccoons. Yeah. Possums. Yeah. Generally don't venture into my property anymore. Right. They're fucking scared. <laughs> because, well, I made it known. <laughs> right. I made it known. I, I look... I come from, I, and, and I know, I know that you I'm pretty and your sure, wife. I'm pretty sure you John wicked a, a, a fucking raccoon, didn't you? Under the shed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah, so. I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, I <clears throat> I come from a different uh, mentality when it comes to these things. Y- they're cute. Possums are slightly cute. I raccoons are adorable and see bears are just big and huggable things but yeah. the reality of it is is they're death machines yeah they're all death yeah. machines and i refuse to allow that to affect my family or my property no i'm so i uh i i do what's necessary i agree because yeah. if if That's i can't thing, like- if i can't maintain a order on my property yeah with being able to feed my family, yeah, then my property's worthless. The value of my uh, yeah. of what I can offer to my family is now worthless, and that's because I've allowed it's a cute thing, little fuzzy animals to run yeah. rampant. It's a thing to be said about when we talk about you know uh, masculine masculinity and protecting. Like, it's not just from other people; it's from in, all. It's from, it's from all, all things, things in general. Yeah, yeah. so. Like my wife, she gets mad um, about me saying stuff like that. Yeah. But realistically, yeah, you, you can't let that happen when you have bears coming onto your property. You have wild animal, and we're Florida, man. Look, yeah. I was driving to uh, uh, it was the Humane Society Terror Trail. Yeah, driving to Terror Trail, all of a sudden, this giant panther 
crosses the street. That's beautiful. I it, think they're beautiful from afar. It leaped. If they get close to me, somebody's somebody's it, getting clapped. It leaped <clears throat> like 20 fucking feet, yeah. right? Into the middle of the highway and then across and mm-hmm. it was done. Yeah. And I was like, see, I've seen When I was a kid, my two. dad hit one. I've seen two my whole life here in Florida. Yeah. They don't make themselves known, nope. but don't but they be. damn sure exist. Yeah. Don't be mistaken. <laughs> Bears, panthers, not cute and cuddly. snakes, gators, crocodiles, mm-hmm. we have them. Yeah. We have killers. They I will mean, fucking kill you. Yeah. We ride gators to work, but that's, <laughs> that's a Florida thing. Like, you guys don't know about that. <laughs> They'll kill your animals. Yeah. They, you know, like I said, we had a raccoon dismember a cat outside. It was gruesome. It was, it was, it, it was gruesome, like ritualistically gruesome. Mm-hmm. And I explained to my wife, like, that's the harsh reality of allowing these animals to coexist on the same the property. Circle of life. <laughs> it happens, man. You yeah. know, and no, it does. My my first thought was like, okay, stop feeding the cats. You yeah. s- you stop feeding the cats, the raccoons will yep. figure out there's no food. They'll find food yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. They, will, they will migrate to where but they I, can I, get a steady source of food. It's tough because I don't want the cats to starve. And I I I'm the same as my wife in a way, you know, I love animals and sure. We, I, I, I love f- bacon too. <laughs> I feel a responsibility <laughs> because I let my wife bring these animals here and there's a responsibility for me. But you know, when you have these other giant killers, you know, or small killers, like yeah. a ra- dude, a raccoon compared to a house cat, a stray cat, a stray, a listen, raccoon will destroy a, a, yeah. a flock of chickens, a stray cat quicker than shit. A cat is a house cat. That's a house cat that's just outside. Because there's no such thing as a stray, like a a stray wild. Raccoon. No, like a wild cat. Wild cat doesn't exist. That's a bobcat. That's a tiger. That's a panther. Yeah. A, a little small house cat is just well, I, a, I'd probably argue that at this point because there, there's been such an overabundance of like cat mating that you have strays. They're just legit strays. They've grown up in the wild. Yeah, but it's it's kind of like they're not wild in the sense they're that not they're wild. Just, they're not. They're feral. Yes, they're, they're feral. feral. That's what. That's kind of what we have. Is we have feral cats. Yes. Now it's the same as dogs, right? Like you encounter a dog in the wild, it's still a fucking dog. It will attack you though. But that's not a coyote. Yes. That's not a a. Depends on what pack what pack they're running with. Have you seen that? True. True. Yeah, I have. I've seen videos of that shit. Yeah. Where like I I don't remember what I was watching, but there was a family who lost the dog and they thought it, they thought it died. Maybe it was one of the homesteading things, but they found the dogs wow. that were now running with, with coyotes and feral, other feral dogs. Like there was a whole pack. Really? Yeah. It was insane, dude. Nah, it was insane. I, I was like, that. bro. No shit. Yes. Yes, dude. These dogs ran off. They thought they got killed. Yeah. Right. The, this family was like, we lost our dogs, you know, all this and that. They found the dogs just putting up trail cams. They found the dogs living with feral dogs and coyotes in a pack. In a pack, yeah, hey. dude. It, you, like don't that's revert. how it goes. But there's there's still a degree of dog in them, not wolf. You know, there's still, and that's how I feel about cats. So, like, oh, we bred the wolf out of them long ago. Yeah, it's like a, a, a sh- unless you own a wolf, a feral cat versus a raccoon. A raccoon's gonna maul. A cat. Yeah. Just wholeheartedly, yes. you know, rip it apart. Yep. And we experienced that. And it was, it was, it sucked. Mm-hmm. And it sucked bad. But it's a hard, it's a hard, hard reality and lesson yeah. to learn. And that's what because they're not cute, cuddly. They're not right. No. They're they're out for themselves. Like yes. That's it, it, it always blew my mind that people would have them as pets. Like they'd find a little baby. Yeah, one no, I and they raise it. And I'm like, are you no. out of your ever love and fucking mind however the videos are funny as shit they are but that's where i, I draw the line raccoons bear dude people who are like oh cuddling with a bear oh did i tell you about the bear that almost you were ran into me in fucking sane i was so back in the day uh your boy here drove a uh 800 scooter to work <laughs> nice because he didn't have a vehicle he needed to get to and from work he drove a Eight hundred dollar, thirty five mile an hour top speed scooter to work. 
fucking got up an hour early to drive 35 miles an hour to my job, like all that shit, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I'm driving to work one day and I'm coming down this one road and okay. you know the road I'm talking about. And there's this big sand hill as you turn through the road. Okay. You know, big sand hill on the side with, with some barbed wire fence, but the fence had been knocked down. Okay. I'm driving 35 mile an hour. It's freezing ass cold, by the way. Yeah. And I say freezing ass cold because when it's cold here, it's wet here too. <laughs> yeah. It's gross. Yeah. So I have a full snowsuit on. Right. M fucking facial cover everything. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this giant black mass come down that hill. The only reason I noticed it is because the sand's white. Right. Right. And it's dark. Yeah barreling down that hill and i was like what the fuck is that <laughs> Shh, no shit dude i was moving just fast enough that he fucking passed my back end as i was driving i never looked back it was <laughs> a giant no. i looked in the rearview mirror yeah fucking giant black bear no shit dude yeah a half a second late him and i would have collided and i probably would have died right you know what i'm saying yeah like these these animals are dude. not to be fucked with and that's what I was saying about whenever I was on my way to work and me and my wife had that conversation when I saw the bear it was this big ass black bear yeah. across the street. And I mean, he was hauling ass. Mm -hmm. He was galloping like a fucking stallion blah, 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 yep, blah, blah. Yeah. across the fucking highway. And I called my wife and I was like, hey, tell me again the story about how we don't have fucking bears here because I just saw one. You might want to call your brother and tell him to watch out yeah. because I know he's got like four kids yeah. and you got a fucking bear over there. They do exist. Like just because you don't see them in a, a daily, you know, on, on, on a regular, uh -huh. they're here. And when you start putting food out for the community on a daily basis, you start attracting these things. And if you live even close to the wilderness, yeah, you know, which we live in town, but a friend of mine owns a restaurant at a golf course. Yeah. Uh, locally. And she, she posted a video. Of, I'm going to tell you, this was weeks before it came into my yard and, and trashed my yard. Oh. I'm pretty sure it was the same damn black bear. Right. Because you could almost follow the migration of it, right? Right, right. Shows up in her, in, in her area, walking up the course, up to the restaurant, to, the, to where the dumpster is. Yeah. Just moseying the fuck along. People, people, you could see people in the background of the video. Yeah. And I'm like... Are you people this fucking retarded that you're just not her? Like she was, she yeah. she knew what she was dealing with. Yeah, but the people on the golf course they just ignore it. Yeah, and I'm going, you should probably just stay away from. Don't ignore it. Know that the threat is there. Yeah, it's it's situational awareness, right? That's yeah. what the military teaches you all the time. Yo, situational awareness. And these motherfuckers out on that golf course did not have that because <laughs> they're just like. And the thing is, like, listen, man, you carry in this a, motherfucker wasn't tiny, dude. You carrying a gun, you carrying a nine. Yeah. yeah. She ain't going to do nothing. Ain't to doing that bear. shit to that damn black bear. No, hell no. You might scare him off. Yeah. And maybe. that's a luck. That's lucky for you. Yeah. Good for you. But if you hit him and piss him off, <laughs> he's coming for your shit. You better have, yeah, 44 Magnum, something to stop him. You ain't going to stop him. What is it? One of my favorite ones, the, uh, the Taurus raging is it the raging no that's that's smith and wesson right what the raging bull yeah yeah i don't know I'm trying to remember who made no i think it is taurus is it i think it is taurus makes really great fucking revolvers oh yeah god they make really great revolvers yep growing up that was the only way to go yeah taurus revolver yeah. man you get 30, you a judge get you a 38 special back in the mm -hmm. 90s i got a judge yeah yeah. Oh, yeah i love it yeah bro it is a beast uh, one of my buddies had to get a big revolver because he was planning out and going out into the woods up north. And he was, he yeah, was, why wouldn't you? Yeah, he was talking about bears and he's like, What should I get? And I was like, 44 and Magnum. Yeah. <laughs> 357, know? 44. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just really take it to the max the best you can, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. This was a good conversation. It yeah. was way off topic of what we originally talked about, but for sure, legit, this was good. But if we're going to leave it here, uh, I have one bit of advice. Buy, buy a big gun, 
if you're going to deal with bears. Everyone should own a big gun. Yeah. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>